Go on. Right guys, um, a while ago on one of my videos I mentioned my homemade alcohol stove and uh, I said if any of you are interested in having a look at it let me know in the comments below and I might demonstrate it. And a few of you have, in fact a guy today asked about it, Enrique Gonzalez. So I'm going to show you how to make one of these. Sound good? See this bag here, this is basically all the mucking around that I've done previously playing around with different stoves. Look, here's one of them. This was an early version of a stove I made. This weighs absolutely nothing. Uh, it works okay, but it takes a while to uh, get the burn going. I'll go get some scales and I'll show you the weights. Okay, so this one weighs seven grams. The one I use now, this is based on a stove called the Fancy Feast. Now this one, that weighs 17 grams. That extra 10 grams, and it's totally worth it for the design of this one. Here's another one. Uh, slightly bigger than this. I made that out of a mini Coca-Cola can. These two, they work okay and I've used them plenty of times. But to be honest, I really don't like having to wait around before the flame re really kicks in. Which is what you have to do with those two. Stoves like these ones, they're made out of basically drinks cans. They've they're made out of just drinks cans and they're very thin aluminium and they're very fiddly to make and although they work I think it's too much effort to make them you've basically got to sandwich one can over another can and it creases and it's it's a ball lake and it takes a while to really ignite the flame my final design now I've used this stove hundreds of times and it's never let me down and it works so well it really does so this is made of three components. There's no gluing, there's no fussing at all. You've got an internal section, which is just a piece of aluminium that I cut from a deodorant can. It's probably twice as thick as a drinks can. Now, you can cut this with a decent pair of scissors. Uh, you just stab the scissor in, and then you can just snip it round. Okay, so this measures about 45 millimeters. That's not critical, you can adjust that. All it does is, it's the distance between the pot and the um, start of the flame, you see? So by adjusting it, you can um, just change how far that flame licks up the side, because really you don't want it to be coming up here because that's just wasted heat. You want it to just sort of be on the edge of the pot. Now you see at the top, I've got a series of holes around there that's unnecessary you can just have one larger hole it's just to let a bit of air flow in once you put that pot on the top I'm a bit OCD and I like everything to be you know what's the word and uh, now down the bottom can you see I've just put a tiny little notch got a little file but again you could use scissors and I just use that and that's just so the um, alcohol can just flow underneath that inside bit so you got your internal part your external part, 45 mil for the internal piece and 30 mil for the outside piece on this particular one. Now the other component is this. This is a very small strip of um, plumber's mat. You can buy it on Amazon, I'll put a link in the description. Now unfortunately these parts you can just sort of get from, you know, deodorant cans that you'd use anyway so it's basically free unless of course you don't use deodorant in which case you're probably a smelly git but um, just just um, when you go out shopping just keep your eye out for stuff like this look at this this is a Corona Sunset drinks can and this is perfect look you've got that thickness there that you need this, you can't, you have to buy it really. I just bought a massive chunk of it. It is a little bit costly, but you buy one mat and it's gonna last, well, you could share it with friends if you've got other people that are interested in making one of these. Um, otherwise, you've always got it, so, I don't know. You have to buy one. So you cut a strip of that, just wide enough to wrap around the circumference of the inside. Then you get that. Backs, be quiet. 
and it just sandwiches between the in inner and the outer like that and that is basically all you need to do to make the stove simple as that and this works better I think than one that you'd buy in a shop uh, now some little tips for you when you choose your cans try and get a flat bottom like this one that's got a bit of a roll on it but it's not too bad now an aerosol or a drinks can you see that it's really concaved and that don't work too well um, I find a flat bottom works best now also you've got to find two different cans that come together with a relatively close gap about three mil difference between the two diameters so I'm gonna make one and see how long it takes so I just went looking for my internal can. This is my external, it's called Got To Be. You can buy it in boots if you're in the UK. Now these size cans are perfect for the internal size, look. But this one is three quarters full. This one's half full. This is my younger son's um, hairspray. So I think I'm gonna use this. Keep my deodorant, eh? <laughs> I sort of regret using that now. Emptying it, I mean, there was tons in there and it smelled lovely. I could have used it. Never mind, it's empty now. That's one thing you gotta make sure of if you're using pressurized cans, you make sure it's fully empty because if you stab it with scissors and there's pressure in there, you're gonna know about it. See that? So even though it's a fairly thick can, it's pretty easy to puncture it. And look, these scissors aren't particularly sharp at all. But it cuts pretty easily. So now all we need to do is cut a 45mm strip of this. And so what I do is I just take a piece of paper like that, get a bit of sellotape. Make it on. Then I can just cut around that edge and I've got it nice and square. Now look at that. Perfect. See? Now all I've done is just turn that paper around so I've got that straight edge on the opposite side. 45mm from the end. And then I cut it again. So there's our inner section. Now what we've got to do is just put a couple of grooves on the bottom there. So I'm just going to use this file. See that? Just put another two in. There you go. Now you don't have to use a file. You could just snip it with a pair of scissors or something if you haven't got a small needle file. Now, all we've got to do is put a hole in the top. I think I'm going to use a drill. That's probably a little bit big, but um, I don't suppose it matters much. That's about the size of the hole on the uh, Fancy Feast. So we'll just go with that. So now I'm just going to take this, put the paper around it again, and measure 30 mil and cut a nice clean edge of a pair of scissors. And there you go guys, that's the outside made. Now all we've got to do is sandwich a strip of plumber's mat in the middle. I've got a straight edge here and I'm just offering up this outer piece to get the right width. And I just cut my strip. When you first put it in, it, it can be quite a task to squeeze it around that gap. But what you can do, I've found, is if you get a sharp knife, you can just sort of scrape the thickness down a little bit just to help you and uh, just make it a little bit easier to get that in. You see, I've took all of this stuff out just to trim it down a bit. Now, once it's like that, I just work it down to the bottom. And as you push that in, you want to try and just make sure you've got a little bit of that plumber's mat visible so you know that you're, you're touching at the bottom the whole way around. So there we go guys, that's how I make my alcohol stove. Um, all that's left to do now is to test it out. 
Also, what you can do if you want to be really fancy is you can get like an emery board and you can bring it back to its original aluminium. Um, I might do that to this one actually because um, I'm thinking I might give this away to one of you guys if you're interested. So, yeah, I think I'll um, clean it up for you. It's getting there, guys. Oh, this is filthy, look. And I've dirtied my shoes. There it is brushed up with a emery pad. There's a bit of blue in there, but that's probably going to burn off anyway. So let's put some alcohol in it and see how it works. Right, I'm going to do this inside, guys, because uh, I haven't got my windshield made yet. So I'm just going to put a little bit of alcohol in there. Don't need very much. Put a lighter on it. Now you probably can't see that. You'll see the flame shortly. It don't take long to um, fire up. See, I, there is a flame there now. It's just probably a bit too bright for you to see. See that, guys? Perfecto. If you've got any comments or questions about the alcohol stove, ask them below and uh, I'll answer them for you. And uh, if there's enough of you that's interested in this one, um, maybe I'll do a giveaway. Um, just leave a comment below if you'd if you'd like a chance to get it, and um, I'll select I'll think of a way of selecting one of you randomly. So guys, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're not subscribed, may as well subscribe, eh? And uh, I'll see you soon. Hello, guys. Let's just adjust this a little bit. Hold on a second, let's fix this. Hold your horses. That'd do us. Thanks is just out chilling underneath my hammock. I've just brought a new one from Dutchware and I modded my own bug net. Look. See that? I bought my own sewing machine. It's only a cheap thing, but it it was pretty easy really. If you guys are interested, I'll make a video about it. If not, if you're not into hammocking, then you don't worry. Okay. You coming in back? Come on. Up. Come and say hello to all your fans. She's dead. Let's go play in the hammock. <laughs>